Imagine TikTok being so powerful that they actually help you identify the person that almost murdered you. On my For You page the other day, I found this viral video that you guys might recognize, which states videos I took before almost being hunted and murdered. I clicked on her page, listened to her story, and was like, I have to know more. So I reached out and got the full thing. This is the case of Flowers Don't Growl. April 29th through April 30th of 2019, Taylor and her boyfriend Chris decided to take a trip to Falls Creek Falls, Tennessee. Taylor was five months pregnant at the time, so they figured they needed one last little trip before they were going to have a baby. And Taylor swore that Chris was going to propose. So that's why she documented so much of this trip, not even realizing that later on it was going to be used as evidence. So they set up at their assigned camping lot. They spent their time hiking, exploring, having fun. Taylor would collect flowers along the way to document it for memory's sake. But please keep these flowers in mind. And then on the second day, everyone from their assigned area was gone except for them. So they were more alone than before, or so they thought. Welcome back to part two of Flowers Don't Growl. So later in the night on their last day, they ended up hearing a loud crash. There's very windy roads nearby, so they figured that it was a wreck. And just to make sure kids weren't involved and that everyone was safe, they got out of their tent and ran over to the crash site, which was maybe half a mile away to go check on the people. The sheriff ends up showing up and it's like a DUI situation, but everyone ultimately was okay. So before heading back to their campsite, Taylor says she has to go use the restroom. So her and Chris walk over to the bathroom so she can do her thing. And in the distance, they see a light flickering. And as it gets closer, they notice that someone is running with a flashlight. So they're both cracking jokes to each other like, oh my gosh, this guy really has to go to the bathroom. But once he approaches the restroom, he ends up stopping right at them instead of actually going into the bathroom. And states, and I quote, wow, you guys are fast. Creepy. Taylor notices that he has a weird smile on his face and feels really nauseous but just associates it with the pregnancy. So just to be nice, they continue to have a conversation with him. But ultimately, this is where things go wrong. Part three on flowers don't growl. So Chris and Taylor continue their weird interaction with this man. Chris explaining that they got to the wreck fast because they wanted to make sure everyone was okay. And the guy goes, yeah, I guess I'm just used to it. And Taylor's confused because like used to what? Hikes? Car wrecks? They ask what he does and he says he travels a lot and likes to go camping. And Taylor, starting to get very uncomfortable now, tells Chris that, hey, they need to go back to the campsite because the police will be over there waiting for their statements. Just trying to make an excuse to leave and Chris could tell it was BS. And as they start to take steps back, he starts to take steps towards them, asking questions like, hey, how long are you guys going to be here for? And his hand kept playing with his hoodie pocket. Chris was starting to pick up on the message as they continued to walk backwards while the man followed them forward. And then this guy decides to tell them a little story. He was like, car accident. It got me thinking this morning as I was hiking and I passed these flowers. I stopped because they were so beautiful and I heard a deep growl and it scared me. And it makes me think, you know, you never know what day is going to be your last. That's when they saw the knife. Part four to flowers don't growl. So this is when Taylor noticed the outline in his hoodie pocket was the shape of a knife. It completely clicked for her and she told her husband that they needed to run. He looked at her like what's going on and she just states flowers don't growl. So they took off running and this is when he took off chasing them. And I'll show a map of where exactly they were chased. This is where Taylor and Chris ended up. And this is where they last saw the guy chasing them. And they made it all the way back to the crash site. And luckily the police were still there. They told them what happened and made a report. And two of the cops went out looking for him, but couldn't find him anywhere. While the other officer accompanied them back to the campsite so that they could pack up their stuff and leave. They tried to get updated on their case later on, but never ever got an update. Having the baby and it being a couple years later, Taylor sits down and ends up making a TikTok. It goes viral and a bunch of people start to DM her with potential suspects. Taylor stopped looking at her DMs because it got so emotional. But one user that messaged her lived in the Falls Creek Falls area and had followed a particular case. She opened the DM and saw the man. This is James L. Jordan. Flowers Don't Growl Part 5. So Taylor immediately recognized James L. Jordan as being the person that tried to attack her and her now husband that night. And horrifyingly enough, he ended up killing two weeks later, stabbing one female victim that did survive, but stabbing the male to death. The male victim ended up sending out an SOS last minute before he passed, and the police came to arrest Jordan. And honestly, one of the worst things was that he was not found guilty by reason of insanity. And Taylor has tried to reach out to police multiple times because he was very calm and collected the night that her and her husband survived.
She has scoured all of her photos trying to figure out where he was at and found out that he was staying back here outside of the regular lots. Followers have pointed out things like this creepy shadow in this video, but ultimately we don't really know where he was at. But because of the story that he told about the flowers, she thinks that he had been stalking them for a while watching her pick them. Taylor now is using her page to promote safety, learning how to protect herself and carrying items such as mace or a taser, and campsites where you pay to camp probably should have security. Taylor is tagged below, so please go follow her to keep up with her story.